Not a bad one. So we're out here just punching these grass mats that have basically flown, floated up into these uh, hard stem cover. We got lily pads as a hard stem cover in this spot. And this particular mat is made up of eelgrass and coontail. That coontail is, is on the bottom. It's, you know, stemmed all the way to the bottom, but this eelgrass in that kind of late summer, early fall time frame, it'll get either uh, uprooted by the wind, other boats, or just start dying off, and then the wind pushes it into these areas. And the reason it sticks here is, is there's this hard stem cover, and, and by that I mean lily pads, uh, cattails, bulrushes, that sort of thing. And that's what keeps that eelgrass in these areas, and underneath it is hollow. A lot of times when you're fishing these, you're throwing on these little points, or that one was more of an inside turn with just straight grass. But you can see I'm not really throwing a lot like way up in those openings. Pretty much focused right on this outside rim of all this grass that's floated up in here. These mats, there's different ways to read them and kind of understand where to cast. You know, you might look at it and it can be super overwhelming that it's just a big mat of grass and trying to pinpoint where these fish are going to be sitting in it. And you're reading it much like you would uh, an outside grass line or any other sort of um, grass line. You're looking for those points in it, uh, inside turns. Any little irregularity is super key. Um, you can see we got up in front of us, we've got a, a big point, but within that, there's one, two, three, four little jut outs. And those are gonna be super high percentage areas for us as we work through here. Now I'll probably still punch a lot of this, but if I had to predict where my bites are gonna come from, your higher percentage is gonna be more on these little points that come out within this whole thing or an inside turn or something like that. Um, I might give those a little bit more time than some of the air, other areas in here. So, you know, when, when you approach something like this, just really make sure you're, you're picking out the irregularities in it and focusing heavily on those. And throughout the day, if you start developing a pattern one way or another, whether it's these fish are way back on the back sides of this mat or out on the points or out on the inside turns. Then you can kind of start running that throughout the lake and be a little bit more efficient in your approach instead of having to fish the whole entire thing. Um, but when you're kind of just starting out the day, you kind of want to fish everything until you really key in on, you know, wh where they're actually sitting and what they're relating to. Another thing that's key with these mats that I've noticed over the years is looking for irregularities on the bottom. And that can be either a bottom change from soft to hard, where you might have a sandy patch underneath it or some rock. But almost more important seems to be like little depressions um, in the bottom. So we're just fishing a straight, what looks like a straight bank here but wherever you might find like a little half foot to one foot depression under these mats can sometimes make all the difference in the world. So it, it might be shallow, 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 and then you might have a, a dip where it goes from one feet to two and a half, three feet. And sometimes they can really bunch up in those little depressions that from the naked eye, when you're looking at it, you would never know it's there and a lot of times you don't know it's there until you start fishing it and you kind of get used to how long your bait is falling. And uh, you get to an area and all of a sudden it starts falling, you know, a little bit longer than what, what it has been for the last 50 yards or something like that. And a lot of times they can really group up in those little depressions. When you're fishing these mats, you're, you really got to be in contact with your bait. You know, I, you can see I've got my finger on, on my line and I'm watching my line as it's falling down through there. And it's super, super important to detecting bites, number one. Um, 
but also finding little depressions or deeper areas within the mat um, or hard spots. You know, if you can feel that your baits may be hitting a rock or harder bottom down there, you can see right, right here, I don't know if you can see the bottom, but it's definitely shallower here than it was back about 50 yards where we ended up catching that fish. But any sort of irregularity or difference under that mat can, can be a big deal when you're trying to dissect a, a massive field of grass that all looks the same. Underneath it, it's really, it's really not all the same, but you kind of got to fish it and pay attention to what your, your bait's doing to really determine that and figure that out. Not real big, but another mat fish. Whoa. You can see where that one was right again in this matted eel grass. That's all been chopped up and now floated in here. Right into these lily pad stems in this shallow water. He's just sitting under there. We got the sun that's starting to come up here a little bit and that'll really help position him more as the day goes on. But that one was kind of right in the middle of that mat. Maybe a little bit deeper water. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's like carpeted grass right here. And you can see, if you look right in here, I don't know if you can see it, that carpeted grass kind of goes away and it's real bare under there. And so it looks kind of shallow out on the edge, but I, I would imagine right under that mat is uh, somewhat clean. And that's right where that fish was sitting. And so whenever you're fishing mats, another thing to really keep in mind of is any sort of grass transitions, whether it's milfoil to coontail or you know eel grass right up next to these pads, or in this case, we've got a little bit thicker eel grass mat butted right up next to kind of a thinner mat. Fish love transitions of any kind, rock to sand, and gravel the muck, pads to cattails, any sort of transition that you can find is good and it's no different when you're fishing these mats like this. Um, definitely something to keep in mind when you're faced with the task of kind of breaking down a big a big mat that looks from a distance looks all the same but when you get up close to it there are little transitions and intricacies within it so Something to always pay attention to when you're doing this. Still working. There's a little guy. Ain't not real big. He's right kind of on that transition again where it was bare under there. It's amazing that that weight actually falls more than you'd think underneath that mat right there, even though it seems super shallow out here. He's real dark, he's been under there for a while. When you're fishing mats, you really wanna make sure you've got the right weight and set up for the job. And by that, I mean, um, you know, typically I'll start with a three quarter ounce to start, and then I'll go up from there if, if I have to. Um, like on the back sides of these mats, you could get away with the three quarter, but when you try and punch through this thicker part, you're seeing I gotta, I kinda really gotta throw it up just to get it through. You really wanna wait that, you know, 90% of the time when you punch, it's gonna go through the mat. And the reason for that is efficiency. The faster you can get through on each little flip, the more flips you're gonna make throughout the day. And in turn, you know, hopefully the more fish you're gonna catch. So um, choosing the right size weight is super key. Um, and then along with that, you kind of got to match your rod, your reel, and your line really to this technique. Um, you can't be using a real limber rod or a, or a light rod. Um, I've got, this is a, a medium heavy, moderate, fast action rod, 7.6. I like a little bit longer rod just from a leverage standpoint. It really helps you to get them out of there. And then this is 65 pound braid. So you don't really want to give them much slack at all. When you do set the hook, the biggest thing is to get their head turned and coming up in the direction of where you're at. If you set the hook and they turn the other way, 
generally that's how you lose these fish in these mats. So having the right rod in line allows you to get their head turned and come in your direction. And this is, I said, moderate fast. So it, you can see the rod has more of a bend, um, kind of in into the mid to back section. Uh, you got a stiff butt section, but it does bend quite a bit into that mid section. Um, and I like that a lot for punching mats compared to just a broomstick. Um, my theory on that is if you got a broomstick that's just stiff all the way to the front, and you're using 65 pound braid, something's gonna give there. And a lot of times it's blowing too big of a hole into the fish's mouth. So you want somewhat of a stiff rod, but not one that's like an absolute broomstick that's gonna just blow their mouth open when you set the hook. So having the right setup is super key, kind of matching that, that weight to the, the thickness of the cover you're fishing to make sure you're efficient um, is kind of all part of the equation when you're punching mats. There's another little guy right on that point. So he was just right on that, right on that edge there, a little guy, right where that mat kind of pushed into the pads and the reeds and he saw, I don't really give these fish a lot of time when I feel them. You know, a lot of times your line's gonna jump right away when it falls in there, or as you're yo-yoing it, they'll grab it. I really don't feel for them. I kind of just reel down and, and set into them. And the biggest reason for that is so when they're under that mat, if they, if they grab that bait and you give them time to swim off one way or the other, um, number one your hooks your line isn't as direct to those fish if they're way over here under the under the mat and then number two when you set that hook it's going to be harder to get them to turn and come up out of there so as soon as you think you got a bite you know reel down and set the hook and, and get them coming your way because that's the biggest key to getting these fish up and out of these mats is getting their head turned to you coming up out of that thing and as soon as you get them up out of that mat if you got a good hook in them, usually you're gonna land them, but uh, the times you're gonna lose them in these mats is if their head is turned the other way and not coming up out of that hole where your bait went in. So um, super key to, to be really paying attention when that bait goes through if you're getting a bite um, and just be really in tune, tune with that thing and not really looking around or, or not paying attention because usually that's when you're gonna lose these fish is, is if, they get that thing and go the other way and, and you try and set the hook and, and um, they're just not coming up, up and out of there. So um, really stay in tune with that bait when you're punching mats. There we go, a little better. That one was way back in that mat. I would call that almost like a, you'd almost call that like a micro mat or a real isolated mat back in there. Um, just something else to kind of look out for when you're fishing these things. It's somewhat isolated. It's only as big as maybe the front deck of our boat, about the size of our boat. and. Um, there's kind of these isolated chunks throughout this whole stretch here that have blown into these bulrushes and, and uh, pads. It's got a real nice hollow canopy, dark canopy on the underside. And um, it's something to always keep, keep in mind and, and keep a lookout for when you're fishing a lake that has mats in general. A lot of times you're gonna find areas where there's smaller isolated ones rather than a big expansive flat. And, a lot of times you can call your shot in those areas or at least fish it a little bit more with the mindset that you're fishing a higher percentage area. You're not having to fish a big 100 yard stretch of, of matted weeds. You're able to fish these real isolated chunks. And it's just gonna up your odds of uh, being a little bit more efficient throughout the day when you're fishing those high percentage areas rather than having to, to spend time fishing a hundred yard stretch or more of, of just pure mat. So um, it's, it's one of my favorite things to do. 
you know, in that kind of summer, fall transition, especially when we get some sun up in that middle, latter part of the day, those, those real isolated mats can be super key. So um, something to keep an eye out for whenever you're, whenever you're punching mats or those smaller isolated size mats are generally pretty high percentage. When you're fishing these mats, one thing that's super important is just to be really observant of your surroundings and really cognizant of everything that's going on around, on around you. And that can mean a couple different things. I mean, number one is, you know, stealth, making sure that you're staying quiet when you're fishing this stuff. You know, I'm keeping my trolling motor on basically one to four settings. I'm not blowing through these areas on on eight, nine, or 10. You're moving real slow, real quiet. Generally, you're fishing in pretty shallow water. So be real cognizant of when you're touching your trolling motor. If you're blowing into an area that you wanna be fishing, don't, don't turn your trolling motor and blow it out before you get a chance to fish it. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two is really keep your ears open for um, mainly for bait fish activity. Uh, what'll happen, in these mats, uh, whether you're fishing uh, lily pads or, or grass mats, there's a lot of bug activity in there. And those bluegills, a lot of times, are gonna be eating those bugs. That's why those bluegills are there. And in turn, that's why the bass are there. And, and those bluegills will, they'll make kind of a sucking or a popping noise uh, when, they, when they eat those bugs on the bottom of the grass mats. And so, it's almost like a Rice Krispie, like pop, 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 pop. So you're, you're trying to listen for those active mats. Um, the ones that are just dead and there's not a lot of activity going on, generally you're not gonna be catching fish around there. So um, when you come across those mats that are real active and they're, they're real loud with that popping noise, really slow down, pick them apart. Um, that popping noise is coming from the bait and generally if the bait is there, that's why the bass are gonna be there. So um, really be in tune with your surroundings from a stealth standpoint and also keeping your ears open um, for any sort of bait fish activity. And that's gonna definitely up your odds and put more fish in the boat when you're punching mats. So when you do find that active mat uh, with a lot of bait fish activity, we're hearing some popping in this area. You know, one thing, that's super key in being stealthy is, is using your talons. So put those talons down when you get into these areas and it's gonna allow you to stay off your trolling motor and really pick apart all these little high percentage areas here a lot more thoroughly. So um, we got a couple real good high percentage targets right in front of us. It's gonna allow us to just sit here and stay off the trolling motor and really pick these things apart and be really quiet while we're doing it. And, and that's really key. A lot of times these mats will actually, sometimes th they come alive when you're just kind of sitting here. You'll, you'll move into the area, you'll put those talons down. Um, it allows things to kind of settle down in the area and you can really pick it apart. And sometimes it'll up your odds of putting a few more fish in the boat. When you're punching mats, you wanna really make sure you're matching your weight to the cover that you're fishing and then also the hook size to the bait that you're using. Uh, right here I've got just a one ounce VMC tungsten weight. This is actually a large bobber stop there. They've got small and medium sizes. I'd recommend a large for punching. It's just going to hold that bigger weight in place better. Um, and we just got a beaver style bait here. Um, in a four-aught VMC heavy-duty flipping hook. And you can see it, that hook comes almost all the way down to the bottom end of that bait. And that's just gonna allow you to get the biggest bite possible when those fish grab your bait. Um, you can use three-aught, that works too. Um, I prefer this four-aught in this style bait. Um, you know, if you got a little bit bigger bait, you might go up to a five. If you got a smaller bait, you go down to a three. But um, making sure you match that hook size to your bait and then your weight size to the density of the mat you're fishing um, and super key when you're punching mats. Every day when you're mat fishing, you know, your, your cadence on how often or how many times you're lifting up that bait once it punches through the mat can be different. You know, today 
we're not giving it a lot of time. We're, we're dropping it through the mat. We're giving it the first drop, maybe a couple hops, hop, hop, and then we're moving on to the next one. And the biggest reason I do that is we can cover a lot more ground that way. And it seems like today, you know, when they're biting it, it's either on that initial fall or the first couple hops. Um, but some days, if, if you have a cold front, perhaps, you know, it might take a little bit longer time that you got to soak that thing in there uh, to get a bite. So let, let the fish determine that for you. Um, each day is a little bit different, but to be efficient, if you can get away with just the initial drop and a couple hops, and that's when you're triggering those bites, it's not really worth it for you to spend you know, more than probably 10, 15 seconds on, on one pitch. Um, make your pitch, hop it a few times, and move along. Yep. Big deal when you're punching mats is feeling that weight as it's dropping down always kind of staying in contact even though you might have slack going down when your bait's falling what i do i'll show you is i keep my finger on my line like this at all times when that weight is falling um, and a lot of times that's how you're going to feel your bite you might see your line jump a little bit um, but if it's it's falling on slack line you really got to keep at least here or hold it here i've seen guys do it or sometimes you can put your thumb on it down here but i prefer to keep it right here when you're flipping your bait and it's falling down through there always have some sort of feeling on your line because a lot of times with this darker braid you can't always see your line when it's going down in there but you can always feel it and that kind of goes back to not really giving these fish a lot of time when they get that bait. It's gonna allow you to detect that bite faster and not allow that fish to swim with it before you set the hook. So if you can detect that bite as fast as possible and set the hook as soon as you know they're on, that's always in your favor when you're fishing mats. And the best way that I've found to detect it is to keep a finger on your line. Um, another thing I've kind of taught myself over the years is is to flip with the hand that is holding your reel rather than pitching with your right and switching over mid cast. You can certainly do that if you if you switch it mid cast, but I feel like I'm in much better position when I just flip with my left. If one bites it right now, I can just I can set the hook right away rather than having to switch over. So um, if you're able to it's just something to work on maybe in the off season get inside the house or in the backyard and and pitch around with that hand that is always on the reel not not on the the crank side always on the reel because normally i grew up pitching with my right hand and when i'm punching now it's pretty rare that i'm i'm punching like this. I'm, I'm generally always with my left hand and that allows me to be a lot faster on the hook set um, if they're biting it right below the mat. Because some of these fish, they'll get, they'll be right below this mat rather than on the bottom. And so they're eating it as soon as that thing enters the water and, and you're able to be ready.